welcome to section 2.21, the light reactions. So in photosynthesis, we've got two basic parts to the reactions. We've got the light reactions, and we've got the dark reactions. Uh, the dark reactions will commonly be called the Kelvin cycle, and the light reactions, when we talk about them, you'll see the word photosystems. And so that's just going to be where there's these two photosystems, which is where the light reactions occur. These are both embedded in the thylakoid membrane, so we're going to discuss them both briefly. We're not going to go into a tremendous detail, but I want to make sure you guys understand how to track the energy of light. So kind of where is it coming from, light obviously, and where is it going to. And I want you guys to be very comfortable with what are we producing, you know, what do we ultimately need, what do we get from this process. And then lastly, where in the chloroplast does this take place? Those are kind of the basic things I'm hoping you guys will get from this. Uh, so starting off, we are going to take the energy from light and we're going to do two things with it. The first thing we're going to do is photolysis, or at least we'll say it's the first. Uh, this is where you split water. So when we talk about photolysis, you're going to take a molecule of water and you're going to break it apart into its pieces. And there'll be three basic pieces you get. You get oxygen, O2, that's molecular, molecular oxygen. That's the stuff we breathe in the air. So this is the stuff that plants give off as waste. So I'm just going to write above this that this is essentially waste and this is going to be what you guys breathe. Uh, so this will be given to animals essentially. Wow, I cannot smell. Uh, so animals will be the ones that are going to take in this oxygen primarily and use it. So this is why we thank plants. You're also going to produce some H plus ions, sometimes called protons. So if you see someone use the term proton, don't freak out, it's just an H plus. An H, a hydrogen atom, actually only has one electron and one proton. So if we take away the electron, you're actually left with a naked proton. It's not as sexy as it sounds. Uh, and then we've got electrons that will be given off. And so these are the three pieces. Now we care about, during photosynthesis, the H pluses and the electrons. We need those. That's why we split water. The oxygen don't need, that's given off. So if I ask questions about where does the oxygen that we breathe come from, why are plants and other photosynthetic organisms so critical for animals, that's the reason, is they can split water, produce oxygen, and release it, which we can then breathe. Now the other thing we use light's energy for is the photosystems. So this is going to be the bulk of what's going on that we care about in the light reactions. And so we're going to use the energy from light to do two basic things. I guess we can kind of add in this middle step just to make it clear. Uh, we're going to transfer the energy from light to electrons. So there will be kind of this middle step here of electrons. We've talked about how pigments, like chlorophyll, will get hit by light. And if they're the right color of light, this will be important, we'll discuss this a bit in class, but photosynthesis only works with certain colors or wavelengths of light. And so if it's just the right one for that pigment, the electron gets excited, it now has stored energy, and so now that electron can have its energy that it's stored removed to do something else. In this case, the something else's are going to be to generate ATP or to generate NADPH. So these are just the equation showing that ATP is made by taking ADP, di versus tri, two versus three, and adding one more. N nothing too fancy there. And NADPH is ultimately going to be mixed with an H plus and actually two electrons. That's why the charge goes away. So we're going to take and mix this up. I'll put a two there just so it balances out for you if you're keeping track. Uh, and so by adding these together, we get NADPH. And then later, both of these guys will be broken back down into their original pieces, these pieces, if you will, these initial pieces. And so they can continue to be assembled and then deassembled or deassembled, whatever you want to call that, uh, and then reassembled again. So these guys will cycle. Now, this is all going to occur in the thylakoid membrane. So the stroma here, this is going to be the outside of the thylakoid, and the thylakoid lumen just means the inside of the thylakoid. So as these electrons go through the photosystems, and you might see the word cytochrome, that's just the term for these proteins that are part of this uh, process of the photosystems. So don't freak out, it just basically means photosystems. So as these electrons, which get excited by a specific wavelength of light, then that electron then has its energy extracted, and you'll see that energy will be used to pump these H pluses into the inside of the thylakoid. And so we're not going to take the energy from electrons directly. We're going to take the energy from the electrons, and we're going to convert that to the H plus gradient we've mentioned before. And then that H plus gradient, where there's a bunch of H pluses inside, they want out. 
You know, they want to go from an area of high concentration to low. There's less H plus outside. So by allowing them to go through this turbine-like enzyme, ATP synthase, that's how we build ATP. So this is going to be one part of the process, is extract energy from electrons, use that to make an H plus gradient by pumping the H plus in, and then use that to make ATP. But there's also another possibility where we'll have a different photosystem, because there's two types, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Uh, the other photosystem type will ultimately take that electron that's rich in energy, and it will ultimately go through a different pathway to, ult to bind it to NADPH. And so it's going to, you might see the term reduce, it just means to add electrons. So it's going to take this NADP plus technically, and it's going to convert it into NADPH. And so this one does not go through the H plus gradient pathway. This one's just going to go from essentially electron straight to NADPH because the energy is still on the electron. The electron's just being held by NADPH. So that's that. So this is just a real quick rehash of kind of what I just wrote. So light will transfer its energy to electrons, and then in some cases it pretty much goes straight to NADPH, or it'll go from light to electrons to an H plus gradient, then to ATP. So this is the general flow that I want to make sure you understand. This bottom process specifically, they're going to have a special name for it called chemiosmosis. And so if you see the term chemiosmosis, just realize it's the process where we use the energy from electrons, we convert it into an H plus gradient, and we use the H plus gradient with our enzyme ATP synthase, all the guys we've talked about, to make ATP. So this will be part of not just photosynthesis, but this will also be part of cellular respiration. So I want to make sure we go over it because it's kind of a big deal when we're talking about things biologically because a lot of the big lifting of making ATP is done by chemiosmosis. You might also see different terms that end in phosphorylation. Uh, phosphorylation just means to add a phosphate group. So if we're talking about making ATP, that's a type of phosphorylation. So if they say, oh, photophosphorylation, you know, makes ATP. That just means using light's energy to make ATP. So this process could also be referred to as photophosphorylation. So don't get too freaked out if they use these big words and you're just like, holy crap. Uh, phosphorylation, just add a phosphate. But whatever comes before it just means how you're doing it. Photophosphorylation, you're just using light to do it. Nothing to get too worried about. And so in summary of what's going on, in the thylakoid membrane, we're going to use H2O, which we're going to break apart to provide us, we talked about with the electrons and the H pluses. We're going to use, need light. You've got to have some form of light, and specifically the wavelength or the color of the light will matter. So to keep things simple, I'll just say that color matters. Uh, different pigments that plants have can mean that they can use different colors, so it's not universal. And then... I guess I can tie in with this. Most plants don't use green. That's the worst thing. When you see a plant, you're seeing the light that it's not using. So most plants prefer to use red and blue. That's what most plant pigments work best with. And so green is kind of the stuff that they're not absorbing. They reflect it. It's bouncing off. And so that's what hits your eye. And you go, oh, look, a green plant. That's because it essentially used or whatever term you want to come up with, processed, stored, uh, connected with the other types of light is why it appears to be green. Not all plants are green though, so that ultimately lets you know that that's not absolute. There are some plants that can use types of color that, that are not red and blue. And then what we're going to produce here is going to be oxygen, which was our waste, so that'll be given off, and we're going to produce ATP and NADPH. Both of these are going to be energy molecules that we will need for the next set of reactions. So these guys are what we have to have so we can move on to the Calvin cycle. That's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take it easy.